Hi, I'm Professor Goins, and welcome to the Math Professor's YouTube channel. If you're looking for videos explaining topics in pretty much any college mathematics course, please consider subscribing and then checking out our playlists. And then once you do that, watch videos, like, comment, share those videos. Those are really simple interactions that you can do that do help us out uh, with the YouTube algorithm to reach more people and to ultimately grow. Now, we're not trying to be professional YouTubers here by any by any stretch of the imagination, um, but you know we would like to be able to grow and to, to reach more people. So if you could help us out, we would greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get into the current video. What I want to take a look at or just kind of discuss here is let's talk about preparing for graduate school. Um, so this is going to be off the cuff here. Um, grad school is a whole different animal than undergrad. No matter what school you go to, even if it's not a top tier school, the graduate program is just in a completely different league than an undergraduate program. And the demands placed on you are going to be significantly different than as an undergrad. A lot of times as an undergrad, you know, the professors are just trying to, let me put a negative spin on it. They're just trying to get you through. Not all, not every time, not every, not every faculty member. But sometimes you're like, you know what, this kid is not going to go on to, to grad school. He's not going to go on to do research. Let's just, let's just get him through. And that's not the case in grad school. In grad school, it's not that they're actively trying to fail you by any means. But what they're trying to look for is who's able to do research? Who's able to actually survive and do some advanced mathematics. So they're going to put a lot of pressure on you. They're going to put a lot of material in your lap. And I remember as, so I took an abstract algebra course as an undergrad. And at the end of the semester, I think I went through my notebook and I counted like the number of theorems that we had proved. And it was like 40 or 50, I think, as an undergraduate. And then in grad school in one semester, so abstract algebra one in, uh, in grad school, I think it was it was well over 200. Um, and not only that, but you were expected to know those theorems, know the proofs, and be able to reproduce those, any of them, on the final exam. Um, so it's just, and, and it was all more sophisticated material. So it's just a completely different animal. Um, so how do you prepare for that? Well, I, I mean, it, partially, one thing that you really cannot prepare for is you have to... I'm just going to go ahead and say it. you have to have a natural ability for mathematics. Not everybody can do undergrad or can do graduate school. Um, quite a few people, you know, I mean, again, you're going to have to be a math person, but a bachelor's is no joke. Graduate school is, is on a completely other plane. It is um, a world of difference. Now, that's not to scare anybody away. It's still doable if you're a mathematical person and you absolutely love it. Your heart has to be in it. I mean, you have to just love doing math and advanced math all day, every day. Like, that's going to be your life. Um, but let me go ahead and get into some recommendations. Here's, here's what I did. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'll do some book recommendations here near the end, but... One thing that I did as I, I was probably a junior, maybe a senior undergrad, is I started collecting books. Amazon is great for that, and especially like, say, Dover books, which are those really cheap paperback. You can get them for like, I don't know, probably 10 bucks, and then used copies, even cheaper than that. But just start collecting materials. And I know, you know, you could probably get books, do a Google search of, you know, title, author, PDF, and you can get copies for free. Uh, on Google. But for me personally, I like physical books. I like to be able to write in them and hold them and, you know, make notes in the, in the margins and things like that. Um, so I was just collecting as many books as I possibly could. As you can see, I've got a pretty good collection behind me. That's not all of them. I've got quite a few in my office as well, but I'm at home in my basement. So I've just got, you know, what I've got behind me. So not only collecting books, but what you need to do is you need to do as much mathematics as possible. And of course, it's like, well, if I'm preparing to go for math grad school, I should do a lot of math. I mean, that's, you know, not surprising. But what you need to do is work exercises all the time. 
I mean, I remember I would carry, I had a backpack with me with multiple books in it. And no matter where I was going, if I was, if I had a few minutes, I'd break out a book and I was, you know, working problems, I have a clipboard with a stack of notebook paper and I'm just working problems. Um, pretty much any time I had, you know, any free time. And I made time for that as well. Like that was what I did. Wake up in the morning, get a cup of coffee. I'm doing mathematics, uh, eating lunch. At night, I'm doing mathematics all the time. And you need to just practice doing proofs, more so proofs than computations, although computations is going to be useful. You need to just work through lots and lots and lots of exercises. And for example, say with abstract algebra, say get 10 books, five books, you know, get have a stack of books and work through, let's say like, you know, working with say homomorphisms. Um, go through one book and do all the exercises related to homomorphisms. Go, then go to the next book and do all the exercises related to that and go through all of those. Read the sections um, because you need to know not only the, the language, the theorems, how to prove things, <clears throat> but just the practice of, of going through exercises. And one thing that that will do, the more you do it, is you'll learn not only the content, but you'll also increase your mathematical maturity, which is this really abstract concept that personally I don't know the definition for, but I know it when I see it and I know it when I felt it. The, the more mathematics I learned, the more mathematically mature I was. And I guess the best way I could put it is the more mathematically mature you are, the easier it is to learn more mathematics on your own or to sit in a lecture and just you can just follow along in an in advanced lecture and you're like, you know, you can kind of learn on the spot. Um, but working as many exercises as you possibly can. And really I would focus on three main topics, abstract algebra, which encompasses group theory, ring theory, field theory. You could even throw linear algebra in there if you want. Um, I really wouldn't do a lot with modules that might, I mean, you'll, you'll definitely learn that in grad school, but as an undergrad, unless you've touched those, I mean, you can look at them, but group theory, ring theory, field theory, especially group theory is going to be the big ticket item for, for preparing for grad school as far as abstract algebra is concerned. So make sure you do a lot with abstract algebra. Um, second, I would say is analysis, primarily real analysis in the context of like lots of epsilon delta stuff, you really probably don't need to explore measure theory too much. Although it wouldn't be a bad idea to look at the very basics of measure theory, like sigma algebras and things like that. And um, maybe like the basic concepts of Lebesgue measure, but you're really not going to get too far into that on your own because it is a pretty darn difficult subject. But it's also, you know, you'll get that in when you're in grad school. Um, you really need to nail down the undergraduate analysis stuff. And again, I've got some recommendations for you, some, some books here that I'll show you here soon. Uh, the third, oh, as far as analysis, you could also look at complex analysis. And that's probably going to be more of the, in the computational realm. Um, like, for example, make sure you can do like, you know, you understand, you know, Taylor's series, Laurent series, um, residue theorem, you know, things like that. Make sure you can do those computations, but um, you really won't use, you know, it'll probably be a little while in grad school before you start doing complex analysis in some sort of an abstract sense. So I would, you know, make sure you, you touch on that as an undergrad or as in preparing, preparing for grad school. And then the third big one would be topology specifically general topology, things like connectedness and compactness and the, the separation axioms and things like that. Make sure you've got your general topology. You, you know a lot about it. You really don't need to touch on algebraic topology like homotopy theory or um, you know, singular homology, things like things along those realms. Um, if you want to explore that, if you have time, go for it. But general topology is the main thing that you need to look at. Uh, in addition to those three, so algebra analysis topology, you could take a look at things like additional topics in set theory or logic, you know, related to prov proving theorems. <clears throat> if you have time, you could always look at, you know, some calculus topics. I really wouldn't spend a lot of time doing much calculus. 
because that's not really going to be the main emphasis. And you'll kind of pick that up as you go through your analysis courses anyway, and you'll pick it up at a more advanced level. But again, if you have time, pick some topics that you're interested in because a big part of it is just doing mathematics. But if you are preparing for grad school, you also want to be able to do the correct mathematics. You know, you really don't need to, if you've never done anything with, say, Fourier analysis, boundary value problems, you know, some kind of basic PDE stuff, you know, don't don't worry about that. Don't, don't be like, you know, and, and again, unless you want to. But my suggestion is just pick the main topics, and then if you have additional time, go ahead and look at some other stuff as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's get into some book recommendations. So I'm going to go over here to my bookshelf. Now, again, I've got a lot more books. That's my wife's side. This is my side. Um, I've got a lot more math books than I will address. But just to kind of hit some basics, <clears throat> first of all, if you um, are a math person, you probably recommend or recognize these yellow books. Of course, the Springer books are classics. If you're going to go to grad school and you want to say, let's let's start with uh, topology. Actually, let's just kind of go down the list here. Actually, no, no, no. Let's just go topology. Um, a really good intro topology book would be Geminiani. I would say this is, you know, it's a cheap book, Dover book. You could get this for, I, I don't know, I haven't looked at prices in a while, probably under 10 bucks. Um, that's a good one to pick up simply because it's cheap and it's pretty good. That's actually the first topology book that I ever used in a course. But the standard is Munkers. This right here is must be on your shelf. You absolutely have to get this and go through it. It is a fantastic book, and it just it's got a lot of content, and it's at the it's at the right level. Whether and if you even if you haven't really taken topology before, that would probably be the main book that I would say to get to even go through on your own or to freshen up or to you know just explore some more topics as well in, in topology. That's a fantastic book to get. Um, other than that, I've got a variety of other topology books up here. Um, Hatcher is a good one, but that's algebraic. So I probably, you know, you could pick it up if you find it for cheap, but you won't look at it for maybe for a little while. One other book that I would probably recommend is Intro to Topological Manifolds. This is a Springer book. It's a really fantastic text. First couple chapters, especially the first chapter you'd want to go through, then it starts getting into topological manifolds, which might get a little bit more intense than you will be prepared for on your own. But um, that's another good one to add to your shelf. I've got some other ones up here that I, I wouldn't recommend as a beginner. You know, Bredon or Rotman, I, I would probably steer clear of those. Um, and then coming down here... Uh, classical homotopy theory, that's in, in notes in algebraic topology. Those you'll look at in even the elements of homology theory. That's way too advanced for beginning grad school. Add them to your shelf if you find them for cheap or if you really are curious, but um, that will be more for down the road. Uh, let me see if I have any other good topology recommendations here. Um, let's see. That's counterexamples and analysis. Where's the other one? Uh, let's see. Counterexamples in topology. This is a good one because topology is really weird and there's lots of examples in here that will be very useful throughout your studying topology. So I'd probably pick that one up as well. Let's take a look at some abstract algebra. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> First of all, you're going to need sort of an introductory text. This one is okay, and I just kind of highlight this one because this is the first one that I used in a course, Durbin Modern Algebra. It's decent. You could, you could pick that one up or you could pick something up, you know, in that similar intro modern algebra uh, variety. That probably wouldn't be my favorite, but I don't think my favorite one is here. Uh, I think it's Beecher and Blair or something like that. That one I have in my office. Uh, let's see. Dummit and Foot is probably the best on the market in my, my eyes. It's a fantastically written book, lots of really good content. It's laid out really well. First few chapters, maybe in the first half dozen chapters, if you took undergraduate algebra, you should be able to get through. Some of the exercises, of course, would be a bit difficult, but um, a good amount of that you could be able to read. This one, um, Algebra Chapter Zero, is also 
it's it's pretty similar to Dumb It and Foot. Both of those are really, really good books. Grove, that was the book that I used in grad school, my initial grad course. And it's a tough book. It's a really tough book. But it's cheap, so you could you could pick that up just as a reference. Any other abstract algebra books? Hungerford is decent. I feel like the notation is a bit outdated, so it's a little bit harder to read, say, than a, a Dummit and Foot and an Alufi. Uh, but Hungerford, it's a good book simply because it's a classic, but the notation, again, is going to be outdated. A Course in the Theory of Groups, this has a really good first chapter, but then I think it kind of gets a little bit too heavy. But, um, you you know, for, again, self-preparing for grad school. But that's a good one to pick up. Uh, what else do I have here for abstract algebra? Don't know that I have anything else. And then let's get into just some analysis books. Let's see. First of all, Elementary Real Analysis by Thompson Bruckner. And Bruckner is a really good one. It's readable. Lots of exercises. And it's, I would say it's, it's at that like perfect level of you've taken an analysis course or two as an undergrad, you want to transition to grad school. This is a fantastic book. In fact, this could probably also be used as an undergrad book, uh, but it's, it's kind of right on that border. Principles of Mathematical Analysis, sometimes nicknamed Baby Rudin. That's a really good book, but it's also tough. It's, it's a tough book. It's dense. Doesn't have a lot of explanations, but it is an absolute classic. If you can pick it up, that'd be a good one to take a look at and to attempt to work through. Uh, what else do I have as far as analysis for about that level? Let's see. Here's a complex analysis book. Conway, Functions of One Complex Variable One. That's a good one. If you've taken at least a complex variables course, I would take a look at that one. Uh, let's see, what else do I have down here for analysis? Wade, this is the book that I use as an undergraduate. It's pretty good. It's kind of, you know, similar to the Thompson, Bruckner, and Bruckner. It's about that same sort of a level. If you can find a used copy for pretty cheap, that's a good one to go, to go through. <clears throat> uh, Real Analysis by Foland. That's measure theory. So that one is going to be, I mean, you might be able to, maybe the first chapter, I don't really remember how much of it, but really not a whole lot of that book you're going to want to go through. Good for reference if you can find a cheap copy, but um, you're definitely, that's going to be a little bit beyond the scope of where you currently are as an undergrad. And I think that's probably a good enough number of analysis books. And like I said, if you want to go through some other topics, you could, well, let's say you wanted to do, to do calculus. I probably, uh, not surprising that I'm going to recommend my own book. So the book that I have published, Calculus, A Rigorous Yet Student-Friendly Approach by Kona Publishing, K-O-N-A. Um, that's a book that I wrote and I'm currently working on the third edition of. That would be a fantastic book to review some, some calculus stuff. Um, but other than that, um, you know, Learn some other mathematics that you are interested in. And if you have any recommendations, go ahead and post them in the comments below. But thank you for watching and please consider subscribing.